Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, never play yourself, take yourself. What's up, homies? Get out. I'm Sierra LePay, and I'm sorry that I keep eating in my latest videos. It's because I'm trying to keep my energy out by eating a bunch of sugar, make it seem like I have a little bit more of a personality than what I actually do. I receive a lot of questions from you guys, and I really appreciate it. Keep the questions going. Let me eat my candy first. Okay, but uh, I got a lot of questions from one particular subscriber and I figured I would make a video about it because I actually have not answered a lot of her questions and I'm sure a lot of other people have these same questions. If you guys have further questions or want me to further explain something, just leave them in the comments below and I'll meet you there. <coughs> in reference to Spain, was it hard to make friends? So it doesn't matter where I am in the world, it's difficult for me to make friends because I'm a little antisocial but I will say in Spain it was a little bit easier than here because the people there are just so genuinely interested in getting to know me the people in Spain are just super duper friendly they love to talk put it in this perspective let's say you're in the US and you've always wanted to go to Spain but somebody from Spain comes and lives in your country and goes to the same school or whatever as you do you're like gonna be super excited to get to know them no um, about their culture and just different things about them because you're really interested in their country and i feel like that's kind of the same way it was when i went to spain number two did any of your peers also value their faith that's a good question people i encountered weren't really big on faith a lot of them believed in a higher power but didn't really believe that god was the ultimate power most practiced religion there i think is catholic catholic i can never say it catholicism when I did find a church, it was pretty cool. The church is called International Church of Barcelona, ICB. And I was able to connect with a lot of peers um, around my age group who believed in God. However, a lot of them weren't from Spain. A lot of them were for other, from other different countries. So, Next question was, did you find a good church? But yeah, that's the church I found, the IBC, ICB. They speak English, but if you don't speak English, they have these um, headphones and they have a translator who will translate the sermon live in Spanish. I would consider it maybe more so a non-denominational church. It wasn't Catholic and definitely wasn't Baptist. Church service was about hour, hour 15 minutes and go there, get your word. I knew a lot of people after going there for a while and then getting connected with um, the community groups that we had each week until I got super busy with school and things. Three, how did your expectations of Spain shift when you were preparing to study abroad and then when you were actually in Spain? I thought I was going to be like the Cheetah Girls singing in the middle of the street with a velour jumpsuit and that life was just going to be perfect but it was still life. Like I still had to deal with challenges every day that I would have had to deal with even if I was in the US but just figuring out how to pay rent, figuring out how to eat, figuring out where I was going to live figuring out why this bug spray is not killing the roaches on contact. So yeah, I guess I was just expecting this really movie-esque type of life. And I would say in Spain, there were things that were even a little bit more difficult to deal with because I wasn't fluent in the language and I wasn't familiar with the culture and the cultural norms. It was hard, it was a hard pill to swallow at first, but once you get used to it, once you get into your groove and you find out what works for you, it gets better. In retrospect, after analyzing my last two years there, it was honestly better than what I initially expected and what I initially dreamed because it was a reality. I lived a reality. Or how did your study habits change when you went to Spain? You got some good questions. I'm just going to refer back to when I got my master's. It changed drastically because I had classes from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. and I had projects, big projects due every single week. And I was also trying to create YouTube content and I was also trying to find time to remain sane. I was also trying to find a place to live for almost three months. So when your time is that limited, you learn very quickly how to maximize every second of the day. And we honestly have a lot of seconds in the day. You realize that once you are utilizing as much of it as you can. And then your next question that piggybacks off of that one was what were those challenges like? Initially it was a challenge because I'm so used to being a procrastinator and I'm used to things going on Sierra's time because I'm the center of my little universe. When I was in school, I had to work with groups most of the time 
and you have to figure out what works best for everyone and you also need to get things done as soon as you can because they will constantly bring us with assignments that we weren't expecting it takes 21 days to change a habit so your brain it likes patterns and when you try to break those patterns the brain fights to try to keep your old patterns because it just doesn't like change i would say after those 21 days after some time i just started to get used to it and i'm still trying to keep that momentum going where i'm staying focused and staying um, busy as much as I can. I am still trying to get a little bit of rest because I've been pretty sick and I'm trying to just recover from the year. It was a challenge but it was a challenge that was not that difficult to overcome. Number five, she said I find it quite hard to speak Spanish due to my anxiety level rather than my lack of not knowing the language. That is exactly something that I've dealt with and I still kind of deal with and I just think it's what most people deal with. I have mentioned in another video that when I lived in Madrid whether or not people spoke English I didn't know most of the time because they were really embarrassed to speak it because they were embarrassed of making mistakes and I've been the same way I've always been like that because you want to sound perfect but I had talked to one of my high school Spanish teachers when I went to Madrid and she was saying if somebody judges you from a mistake or looks down on you because of a mistake who are they because they're no different from you in terms of being a human being we all make mistakes and she was also saying why are you looking so highly upon yourself as if you can't make a mistake so after she said those two things it really kind of helped me deal with myself and say hey the only way that Sierra is going to learn this language is that Sierra has to practice and Sierra has to make mistakes and you learn better when you make mistakes because you remember that ah shucks that was a mistake it's actually goes the phrase goes like this or the words pronounced like this but i can honestly say i still have moments where i'm like super shy or super kind of embarrassed to say things and i still make grammar mistakes i still make a lot of mistakes i still don't even i can't understand someone 100 percent i usually understand people 75 80 percent but also if i don't know it's okay to say okay otra vez no entiendo so the advice i would give for, to you is first just work on you work on realizing that the only way you're going to learn is that you're going to have to make yourself vulnerable you're going to have to put yourself out there you're going to have to make mistakes and then the last question is number six did you have time to travel the rest of europe unfortunately i didn't really travel too much around europe because i lacked a lot of time in madrid because i had two internships so my weekends were completely booked with that this time around i didn't have the time and if I ever did have the time, it was I lacked the finances. Initially, I was super bummed out about that. I'll link a video up here how I talked about how I was angry with God because of that, because I felt like all my peers were doing traveling and living their best lives. And I was like, God, I mind my business. I stay hydrated. I eat my vegetables. I deserve to travel when these people are like, not even into you like I am into you. It's not fair. So God dealt with me about that. So I'll have my video up there about it what my mom kept reminding me of is that when i was in europe i was there to study i was not there to party i was not there to live my best life i was i had a focus i'm proud of myself for remaining focused on what i came there to do i will always have the time to go back and travel and have the means and the finances to stay in the nicest hotels and to really enjoy my stay why don't i wait for that time where i can really you know live it up in europe I mean, if you have the time, definitely do it. You can get some really cheap flights around Europe. You can get some cheap bus passes around Europe. But if it's something that you just don't have the means or the time for, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't be mad at God. Just know that it's coming for you. Just be patient. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions, please let, leave them down below. I would love to answer them. And if you find this video helpful, please share it. And until the next video, as long as